Edenvale Airport. Automated weather observation, 1318 Zulu. Wind, zero, 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 at zero, one knot. Welcome back to the hangar. One, Charlie nine, Fox, Mike Victor uniform is now ours. The deal is done. Money has exchanged hands. This aircraft is now ours. Now the work really begins. So we just spent two days with Chris um, in his hangar doing the pre-buy that rolled right into the annual. The aircraft passed the annual, but there are two minor snags that, um, that we'd want to take care of before we fly it. One is replacing the generator. The generator is generating, um, but neither of us really trust it. So we're going to replace that. Parts are on order. As soon as those come in, we'll be back in Chris's shop replacing it. The other is the spinner. Um, this aircraft is missing the spinner that goes on the front of the prop. Uh, regulations are unclear as to whether it actually needs one. It has been flown for years probably without one. I've got the parts on order. I was trying to find used ones, but as Chris so sagely told me, that's the part of the airplane that crashes first. There aren't too many used ones. And he's right, I couldn't find any. So I've got, um, I've got parts on order for that. They're on back order. They could be difficult to find. So we'll wait and see on those. The other thing really is the paperwork. Um, because this aircraft had been in and out of service so often, when I filed the paperwork with Transport Canada, they came back to me and said, whoa, whoa wait a second. Charlie Foxtrot, Mike Victor uniform. Whoa, we haven't had paperwork on that aircraft since 2005. Um, you need to submit all of the log books from 2005 until 2021. We want to see everything about this aircraft and what's happened to it in those years because it's a black hole as far as they're concerned. They thought the plane was, you know, gone. So I submitted all that paperwork. Could be six to eight weeks before I get the paperwork back that says I can fly this aircraft. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for parts, while I'm waiting for paperwork, we're going to jump in and do all of the cosmetic things that are just grunt labor that I'm allowed to do on my own. We're going to strip out the interior and in a future episode we're going to strip the paint off. So today we're going to jump inside the aircraft and we're going to take that interior out and we're going to scrape off all the glue and all of the gunk and try to make this into a really sort of nice utility interior. Now, the first thing to do is remove these seats. I've already got the carpet out. We took the carpet out during the uh, pre buy and annual so that we could look through all the inspection plates. There's a bit of a job ahead of me here. Now, the first thing I have to do is take out this auxiliary seat stop. Um, this is a stopgap measure. And it was put in because at some point they found that these seats weren't uh, latching properly and they would slide right back. Pilots would lose control of the aircraft and causing accidents. So they put in this, uh, this little thing on the track to stop the seat from going back. Um, this has since been superseded by something else that we will fix in the future because obviously uh, it's coming apart already. And then the seat just slides back. Oh. There's another seat stop here. Same sort of idea, just on this track. It's got a pin. They were really afraid of these seats falling off. And now that the seats are out, we'll move on to the interior panels, these beautiful green panels. I'm hoping that these ones on the door are put on the same way as a car door panel is, just with clips on the back side that I pop out. Yeah, that seems to be it. So just carefully go around the outside, pop those out. The, uh, the door handle is another question though. I don't see how I'm going to get it off. Try to get the door panel off first. Carefully get under, pry them off. Huh. OK, 
Okay, so the only thing holding me back now is this door handle. There doesn't seem to be... Hmm. I wonder how that comes off. If anybody knows, write it in the comments down below. Although that's not going to help me today. <laughs> Somewhere in here is a C clip. And I just have to dislodge it. I can barely see it. And I know that you're not going to see it in the camera. I love the airplane noises. This is this is the first time in my film career. Am I in focus? This is the first time in my film career that I haven't had to stop rolling the camera because there was an airplane going by. I love it. Which side is the C-clamp on? There it is half off and I'm not too worried C clamp I think that's what it's called and off comes the handle and off comes the panel look at that now even though I am taking all of this stuff out and I will eventually be probably tossing it although I might just hang on to it keep it in the back corner of the hangar I need to, for the moment, hang on to it, and I need to weigh everything that comes out of this aircraft that isn't going back in. Um, that's something we need to do for the weight and balance, although I kind of think before I fly this plane, we're actually going to put it on scales and do a full proper weight and balance anyway. So we'll see what happens. But for now, I'm just going to keep all of this stuff aside and weigh the individual pieces and keep records of it. Um, I think that's the best practice or the best thing to do. And I think that's it. So this should open up and reveal the tail cone. Now I have to temporarily remove the ashtray and the armrest for the back seat, but the screws holding those on are on the outside of the aircraft. So I'm going to take those off so that I can get at the green and then I will probably put them back on temporarily just so that I, uh, I don't lose them. Although eventually I think I'm going to replace the ashtray with uh, someplace back here that if I ever do put a back seat in, which probably isn't very likely, um, there's some place for the back seat passengers to plug in headphones. And this just pulls, just pulls right off. Okay, now I want to take the headliner out. And in order to take the headliner out, I temporarily have to remove the shoulder restraints and a couple of other panels throughout the aircraft. Um, I'm going to hang on to the headliner. I know there's a lot of people who are looking for headliners in really good shape, and this one is in really good shape. But I'm, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to hang on to it. and. At some point I may reuse it and I have to take this top plate out with the lights. Now I understand there's a lot of people saying you're taking out the stuff that is soundproofing the aircraft and to a certain extent I am taking out stuff that's soundproofing the aircraft but with modern headsets with noise cancelling I think I should be okay. I've flown in aircraft stripped down like this. Um, I'm basing my um, what I'm doing here on my personal experiences of flying in aircraft without any of the insulation. 
without any of the soundproofing. And they're perfectly fine. You don't notice it at all. In 1960, when this aircraft was built, there was a speaker right here um, in just above the headliner and there was a microphone on the panel. And the pilots and the, and the co-pilots at that point didn't fly with headphones. They just sat in the aircraft, no headphones, they listened to what was coming over the speaker and then they spoke into a microphone, just like you would on a CB radio. And it would have been incredibly noisy in this aircraft at that point, even with the insulation. I gotta tell you, the insulation really doesn't do much. So let's, uh, let's keep working. I wish I had brought a different set of wrenches today. Um, that's the trouble about working in borrowed hangers. I don't have the right tools. So I've got this adjustable crescent wrench and I'm just gonna have to make it work. It'll be fine. So this headliner is actually pushed up. It's crimped inside. There's a little track here with, with dogs or teeth and it's jammed up in and the teeth keep it from coming back out. I guess they thought if you were ever going to remove the headliner, you would be replacing it with a brand new one. So I'm trying very carefully um, just to pry it open a little bit and pull it past the teeth um, without ruining it. It's a bit of a job. At the back of the plane is a hat shelf. I guess in 1960 when this plane was built, you needed some place to put your fedora. I don't have a fedora. I don't need to take my fedora off. I need space inside the aircraft. And so I've, I've had a couple of discussions with my AME, Chris, and he said, you know, I don't know if you can take it out. So I looked online at, uh, at some of the message boards for this aircraft and for Bush aircraft in general. And the discussion there was, I don't think you can take it out. Um, you shouldn't take it out. It's part of the airplane. You can't take it out. But in the pilot operating handbook for this aircraft, um, which is the, the handbook that lets you know what you can and can't do with the aircraft, what the performance values are, et cetera, et cetera, there is a page where it shows that you can take this out and how much cargo space you could have by taking it out the back seat and the pilot's or the co-pilot seat. So because in the pilot's operating handbook, it says you can take it out. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to set it aside. I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, and if anyone from Transport Canada is watching this and this is something that I shouldn't be doing, please contact me and let me know that I should put it back in. Until then, I'm taking it out. Oh, it looks like it's held in with like 40 screws. This is taking much longer than I thought. Now, the interior has been stripped out. Everything is gone. Um, all of the soft furnishings, all of the carpet, all of the coverings, the headliner, all gone. I found a bunch of stuff hiding above the headliner. Um, didn't really surprise me, but you know, I got it out. And I've reached that point in the project um, that I think most people reach in big projects where you think, am I doing the right thing? Um, it took a little bit longer than I thought to take everything out. And that's partly my own fault because I was trying to be careful uh, to save things in case I wanted to reuse them at some point in the future. Um, also to save things in case other people need them. Someone might come knocking on my door one day and say, hey, have you got, and I'll think, yeah, I took that out of my plane. I don't need it. I don't want it. You can have it. So it took longer than I thought. Now I'm faced with the next part of this interior project where there's two different substances that I have to get off of the inside. Um, you're going to notice all along here, there's this black stuff. I've heard it called a number of different things, but it is a petroleum based product and it is uh, apparently really hard to get off. And then there's this yellow everywhere that you see this yellow and that is a glue. The glue will be simple to get off, uh, even though it might be time consuming. I'm just going to use a product called, I believe it's toluene or toline or tuline. I'll show you the can. Not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. And that is a solvent that just softens it up. It'll be really easy to scrape off with a plastic scraper. Um, this, uh, this darker stuff, this black tar stuff is going to be more difficult. Um, I know it's going to be more difficult and I'm going to have to try a couple of different things to get it off. Reading through the forums, um, anybody who has done this and has taken it off 
usually says that they go through two or three products. One product will work and then it won't work and then they think it's not working and then they'll try something else and that'll seem to work better. There doesn't seem to be any consensus on what to use. So that's probably going to take me two or three full days of working in here with a mask and a scraper. Um, trying to keep the airflow moving through because, you know, both of these products that I'm going to be using are nauseous and will make you pass out. So I will have a full respirator on, I will have goggles, I will have gloves, and uh, I'll just take time and make it happen. Now, that was four days of hot, tedious work. Um, I wore a bunny suit through most of it. It's really cramped inside there and uh, the chemicals were dripping down off of the ceiling. Bunny suit really saved me. Safety glasses and of course our respirator. That toluene um, is pretty horrible stuff. It'll knock you out pretty quickly. And I also used uh, this. This is PTI Sure Strip Paint Stripper. Um, and I found that it worked extremely well because it is very viscous. It's thick, almost like snot. And you could put it on with a paintbrush. It would stick and hold on and then soften up all of the, uh, the black pitch, the tar pitch, and the glue. And I could scrape most of it off. And then I could come in with the toluene that I put in a spray bottle. And I could spray it on and then wipe it off with a cloth. That seemed to work extremely well. Do you want to take a look inside? So I got all of the glue and the tar and the pitch off of the side panels, the ceiling, all of the glue off of the floor that was holding the carpet down. And I've ditched all of the interior panels and, uh, and the headliner. I'm not going to put those back on. I'm going to paint it. And I'm going to put a rubber mat down on the floor instead of the carpet. That's all going to take a little while. I'm not going to prime and paint the interior until I've stripped the exterior, just in case I get some of that paint stripper where it's not supposed to be. So, all told, I took 35 pounds of stuff out of the interior of this plane. Um, and any weight that you can save in an aircraft is a great thing. Um, it means that you can carry more fuel, it means that you can carry more cargo, it means that you can get off the ground faster. It's all a balance. Um, in fact, it's all weight and balance. It really depends on what your, what your mission is, what you're looking for. So that savings of 35 pounds, I'm going to lose some of that when I put the floor mat back in. That will probably bring back about 15 pounds. Um, I'm gonna put the extended baggage in, that will probably bring about 15 pounds. And at that point, it's all a wash. But at least I didn't eat into my empty weight, which is going to be great because it's going to give Julie and I room to put bikes and camping gear in the back. So that's it for this time. Um, it is a tedious job. It is a hot job. It is a cramped job. I am so glad that it's done. Um, painting is going to be equally difficult, again, because it is a small cramped space. But I don't think it's a job that you should be afraid of. It's going to take some time, and if you can only devote an hour or two, a night or a week to doing it, it will stretch out. I was lucky enough that I had four days that I could block off and come here and do this, and I got it done. So, um, hang on for the next video, and, uh, and we'll see what we do next to Charlie Foxtrot Mike Victor uniform. Thanks for stopping by. See you again.